Hey, it's Mark from Migraine Professional, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about status migranosis and intractable migraines and what to do about them. So status migranosis, or commonly called the intractable migraine, is one that lasts over 72 hours, and it doesn't really respond to um, medications, whether that's over-the-counter or prescription. So it's really important that you have this addressed by your healthcare provider. You have to make sure you tell them and they know you're experiencing them because status migranosis is associated with a two times increased um, risk for suicide over just regular migraines. So this is big. So kind of what we want to understand is that status migranosis is, it's really multifactorial. There's a lot of players here. But we need to understand that as a, a study by Dr. Porcum has found that there are actually a massive amount of sort of reparative nutrients and growth factors and stem cells that migraines create. So when a migraine actually is triggered, all of these incredibly helpful and powerful and protective mechanisms go into play in the brain. So it's almost like migraines are necessary. They're, they're helpful for the brain. They're there for a reason. And they are trying to protect the brain because of some damage that is being done to the brain because of stress that is causing degeneration, inflammation, oxidation in the brain. So some of the biggest symptoms of status migranosis, I mean, there's a wide variety of them. But some of the most important, obviously, neck and head pain. Um, sensitivity to light, sound, smells, brain fog, cognitive problems, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, dizziness, vertigo, visual symptoms, and so much more. I mean, migraine affects every system in the body. There's all kinds of different players going on because the body is trying to deal with this stress. So, some of the, the main triggers that you kind of have to just learn to avoid, deal with, investigate to see if they're the ones that are doing it for you because everyone's a little different are, of course, food. Everything that you take in is affecting you. It's getting into your body and it's affecting your gut. It's getting into your gut. You have to make sure that you, that you deal with it. So drinks, beverages, you really got to be careful with the, the caffeinated and the really high sugar beverages because they're like an IV of sugar into your bloodstream. If you have blood sugar handling problems, this is a big, big stressor on the body. It causes lots and lots of issues. Then environment. Environment is one of the least talked about problems. Um, so everything, everything in your home is off-gassing the chemicals that it was made with. It's releasing them into the air. So especially with new things, new things are off-gassing an incredible amount of, of chemicals into the air. You're breathing these in, they're touching your skin, they're getting absorbed through your skin. You have to remember your skin isn't solid, it's, it's semi-permeable. So things are getting in and out of it all of the time. And so everything that you put on your skin, it's getting into your body, it's getting absorbed to, into your body, and it has to get processed through your liver. So it's putting a strain on your liver, it's getting into your brain, it's getting into your blood. It's creating problems. It's adding stress to the body. It's adding up to those sugar levels. And one of the least commonly talked about, but in the migraine community, we know it's a big problem, is sick building syndrome. So sick building syndrome is when buildings are old or they're not maintained or they're not made well for health and they start developing like pockets of mold and dust and poor lighting and lots of off-gassing and all of these things and then they start circulating into the airspace and we're constantly inhaling them when we're in there. So we have to be very, very careful. We have to choose our health over the place that we might have to work at because it's adversely affecting us and it's going to end up costing us in the long run. Then of course medication. You have to be very clear with your doctor on what medications you can take, what medications you can't take your maximums, your frequency, you have to be very clear as medications will cause incredibly hard to deal with rebound migraines, rebound headaches. And then hormones. Obviously, whenever your period's coming around, your hormones are gonna drop and that drop is enough to trigger that migraine. So you wanna be wary of that and you wanna support it. You wanna avoid anything that's adding more stress to your hormones. And then physical activity. 
Uh, too little physical activity is bad and too much physical activity is bad. When you're getting too little, your body's getting tight, it's getting stiff, is you're developing trigger points and sort of tension. And when you're getting too much, then you're overworking your body. Again, you're developing trigger points. You're not able to sort of repair and recover and rejuvenate. And then you're developing problems. So you just want a little bit of physical activity because it resets your physiology. It resets your body, all your muscles and tendons and ligaments and joints. It brings more oxygen and blood flow and resources to them as well as your brain. And one of the best things to change your brain's physiology in the morning is to do a, a maximum intensity workout really quickly as long as that's not one of your triggers. And then, of course, stress. Stress comes in all shapes and sizes and forms. So you want to make sure, especially mental and emotional stress, that's a big problem that needs to be dealt with. You want to try and kind of deal with what's actually causing your stress instead of kind of trying to do, just do patchwork and uh, maybe maybe do some, uh, do some meditation or breathing might be good in the moment, but you want to really address what is causing you to become stressed out over these issues. And then... After the triggers, we want to kind of understand what is, what is maintaining these migraines. What is causing them to continue day after day after day, over 72 hours, and even with medications. And so, in our article, Status Migrainosis and Three Life-Saving Ways to Understand It, which I'll link to in the description, we talk about the maintainers. So, maintainers are the things that keep it rolling. So, the first one is structure. You have to make sure that you have your structure assessed, either by a Czech practitioner or a Nuka chiropractor. They're, they're really good generally. Um, fascial stretch therapists are great. You want to make sure that you have your structure assessed, especially your upper cervical structure, because if something is off, it's going to be creating a lot of different problems, a lot of tensions. It's going to be affecting your organs. Uh, it's going to be creating, kind of just bringing up your trigger levels. And then the mental and emotional. So of course, like we talked about, mental and emotional stress will affect every single other system in your body. The gut brain, the gut brain axis is so powerful that the more stress you're under, the less oral tolerance you'll have to food. So the more sensitive you'll become to food. So you have to make sure you bring down the mental and emotional stress. Whether that be mental stress from just obsessing over things, feeling like you need to do things, or emotional stress where you're holding on to emotional tensions and they're kind of driving actions and behaviors and um, kind of revving up your physiology when you really don't need to be, when you don't need to be stressed out and in that sympathetic fight or flight state. And then nutrition. If you're not eating to feed your brain, if you're not eating good food, then you will suffer. You will start seeing the effects of it over, it might be over weeks, it might be over months, it might be over years, but food is what creates your brain. It gives you the building blocks for your brain. And so then you can choose whether you want that to be a really strong brain cells or weak brain cells. Then environment, like we talked about, sick buildings, all of the different chemicals around you, they influence the system called nociception. Nociception is basically, it's like um, the sense of the nervous system. And so it it takes a tally of everything that's going on. Because the nervous system is kind of connected to everything, it takes a tally of all the different stressors that are going on, and then it sums it up. And if that tally is too high, your nervous system is in danger mode. It's in survival mode, safety mode. It's, getting, it's going to sympathetic and it's having lots of problems. You're shooting up your trigger levels. You're getting them really close to your threshold. So you want to make sure you kind of reduce your exposure to all of these different things. Even if it might seem kind of minor, oh, switch laundry detergent, oh, switch to uh, an organic cotton. Um, in the long run, they, they add up and they take the load off your liver. And then the IgI, so infections, your gut and your immune system. These are huge and they're really, um, they're not addressed as well as they should be and they're incredibly prevalent. But everything that happens in your, um, your gut and your immune system is affecting your brain, um, especially infections in the gut. Infections in the gut, they're huge, they're a big problem um, and they create a lot of different byproducts from the infections, a lot of strain on the nervous system, strain on the immune system, strain on the liver, the kidneys, the, the organs of detoxification that brings up your trigger levels again. So you want to make sure that you have those addressed 
Um, even if you might not have digestive symptoms, um, if you're getting, let's say, food sensitivities, then you, you want to kind of be careful and, and see what's going on. And then your hormones. So hormones, again, you want to be you want to make sure that you're supporting your progesterone. So progesterone, it's one of the, the sort of master hormones. You want to make sure that it's well supported. And we talked about how you can do that in the five most common mistakes of hormonal migraines, which I'll link to in the description. And then your lifestyle. Lifestyle, it kind of connects everything all together. And it might seem like, oh, just lifestyle, yeah, whatever. But lifestyle is incredibly important because it's what creates all of the stressors, all of the ability to cope, and all of the kind of end products of everything. So lifestyle is, is huge in affecting our physiology as a whole. I mean, we might, let's say, we might eat three times a day, but we're breathing every couple seconds we need to sleep eight hours a day. Um, if we're not getting these simple basic things that, that our lifestyle requires, uh, which our evolution is kind of asking for, then we're adding stress to the body. The body thinks, oh, something's wrong, something's going on. We're in a, a stressful situation, a famine. It starts restricting its ability to deal with situations. We start developing problems. So that's the first of the three life-saving ways. And then in the actual article, we talk about nutritional um, deficiencies and interventions. So these are huge. Um, so deficiencies, it, it's a big problem because if your body is missing nutrients, then it can't build cells, it can't go through functions, it can't, it can't do anything, it can't, it's just missing. It's missing a link to the entire chain of the puzzle. Same with nutritional interventions. So if you're constantly eating foods that are aggravating your body, then you are you just keep throwing gasoline on the fire, the fire of inflammation, of neuroinflammation, inflammation in the brain. You just keep throwing gasoline on it. it keeps kind of adding to it, adding to it, adding to it. You're throwing um, gasoline on the fire in your gut. And so you want to make sure that you kind of you address and you kind of deal with, with nutrition as an intervention. You go from nutrition being and food being a thing of sort of maybe satisfaction or emotional happiness to a medicine and a solid way of addressing your health and getting healthier. And that's why we kind of created the Food Triggers Guide because one of the most successful sort of therapies for migraines and headaches is the elimination diet. So then we created the Food Triggers Guide because the elimination diet, it's hard to do. It's difficult for most people to do it. So we go through, uh, we kind of take you step by step what's going on, what's creating these food sensitivities, and what can you do to kind of, um, what's the step by step you can do it in an easier way to understand what's going on in your body. And then deficiencies, simple things, just like a, like a vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency, it's incredibly prevalent, but it's not actually a vitamin, it's a hormone. Vitamin D is a hormone that every single cell in your body requires. And so if you're not, if you don't have enough of it, your immune system isn't being modulated, inflammation isn't being modulated, your hormones aren't being modulated properly, and you're missing this chain to, you're missing a link to your chain, and then everything kind of starts falling apart, you start getting this cascade downhill. So really what's important is that you, whenever you're dealing with status migranosis, you remove those maintaining factors and you're careful for your triggers. You, you get to know your triggers. You get to know when to avoid certain things, but then you remove your maintainers because your maintainers keep throwing gasoline on the fire and you want to make sure that you kind of deal with your nutritional deficiencies and interventions, which we talk about in depth in the article. And so I'll link to the article in the description. It's status migranosis, intractable migraines, and three life-saving ways to understand them. And so I kind of, let me know in the comments below, have you ever experienced a status migraine or have you ever experienced a migraine over 72 hours or one that just didn't respond to medications? So let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from Migraine Professional. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner so that others can find this information as well. If you want to learn more about migraines than you've ever known before and how to deal with them, make sure to go to our website. Thanks.